So if, if I don't have, <clears throat> if I can't drive a, a pelvic orientation that can capture the IR, mm-hmm. where are you, you going to land? Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. It is Wednesday. That means that tomorrow's Thursday. Therefore, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning coffee and coaches conference call. As usual, as we have done for the last, I don't know, 76 um, Thursdays, give or take one or two when I'm on vacation. Um, These are great calls. Uh, Please join us at 6 a.m. Bring your coffee, bring your questions. Always a great time. Uh, Digging into today's Q&A, this is with Cameron. Cameron is a a veteran of the intensive, and um, so we kind of dug deep into some, some knee pain issues. Cameron was using a downhill walk as a, as a context uh, for this discussion, but, but really what I want to bring um, to light here is that this knee stuff tends to be about it, relationships. So we have to talk about foot position. We have to talk about axial skeletal position. Many of these situations are, are just results um, that, that show up in certain areas. So give, give for instance, yesterday I was working with a dancer um, with some midfoot pain, and it turned out that we had to get an axial skeletal position, a knee position, and then um, the foot symptoms actually resolved under those circumstances. So it's not just about the foot. Um, these things, again, tend to be results of other uh, iterative anatomy concerns and relationships. So uh, again, I think this will be a good uh, Q&A for a lot of people. If you'd like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com. Put 15-minute consultation in the subject line. We'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everyone have an outstanding Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., Coffee and Coaches Conference Call. Uh Yesterday I was going for a walk, and I was thinking about walking downhill as if you were like, if you were like hiking, coming down like a fairly steep grade. Mm -hmm. And... That's right. So like when you land, so when you go to, cause you almost kind of quickly land on, this is not much of like a heel strike. Cause you're almost like coming down with like almost a flat foot. So you have enough traction on like a, on a rock or the surface that you're on. If you're doing one of those like scoot sort of walking down a hill things. Yeah. Uh, in that case are, but cause you're still like in a, almost like a plantar flex position. Uh-huh. Are you, so for people that have like a, a lot of like anterior knee pain when they come down a hill like that, yeah, is it, is I'm just trying to think, so, so like in, in an ideal to make sure you don't fall down the mountain, like you have to like land uh, pretty quick into like an early mid propulsive situation. Well, it's definitely early. If you're, if you're going downhill, you're, yeah. you're using an, an early representation. Right. Right. And there's still IR there. Yeah. Uh, so say for people like when I fire to get them, feed them on the table and they have like very little internal rotation available to them. Are they then just like sort of doing mini vaults over their, like their feet and just getting like the twists through like the, through the knee in that case to make sure they don't keep falling down the mountain? Well, I need downward force, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you, what orientation do you think you're going to end up with at the knee under that circumstance? So if, if I don't have, <clears throat> if I can't drive a, a pelvic orientation that can capture the IR, mm-hmm. where are you get, where are you going to land? Gotcha. Where, where's the weight on your foot under that circumstance? But be more on like the outside then. Yeah. It's, it's, it, so it's going to be more lateral and, and, and distal towards the forefoot. Right. Right. Yeah. So how much internal rotation and downward force are you capable of under those circumstances? Yeah, not much. It's less. It's yeah. less than you would want. But if I don't want to slide down the, the mountain, right? Yeah. How where are you gonna where are you gonna try to produce your IR? Yeah, I guess that's your knee at that point then, or somewhere. Okay, so so it's not just your knee, you understand well, that. Right? Yeah, it'll be like an anterior orientation. Yes, and, there you go. So, so everything has to anteriorly orient, and the knee is just a representation of that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Because okay. I got to have, so think about this. So if I'm on the lateral aspect of the foot, mm-hmm. and let's exaggerate it for effect here. I'm on the lateral aspect. I don't have a first metatarsal head. 
on the ground. Right. Okay. Where's the next first metatarsal head going to be? Because I always thought that like the picture, or at least just out of memorization, the big toe being the knee, but I suppose that would be. Yeah, it's going to be your femur. It's going to okay. be the next one, right? Okay. Right? And then, for, but for me to get that down, all right? So I have to have a downward force that's going to fall inside the foot. Otherwise, like I said, if the, if the, if the, if the force is on the outside edge of the foot, that foot is going to slide, mm -hmm. right? It's going to slide down the surface. Yeah. So I have to create the downward force inside the base of support, which is going to be the, the next available is going to be the femur, right? Okay. But I have to anteriorly orient to get that to go. What would be the next femur superior to that? Well, what do you think it would be? Well, is, is it like L5S1? Yeah. All right. Yeah, real simple. <laughs> Both. Oh, yeah. Well, where's the anterior orientation? Yeah. It, yeah. Right? yeah we have to, I have to create pressure there, right? Don't I? Yeah. 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 Remember, right. it's, just, it's downforce. We got to put pressure down somewhere. That's what you're trying to do. Right. Gotcha. Okay. That's why right. anterior orientation is, is, it steals your ERs, right? Right. Because I got to increase my IR force. So I got to give up the ER to get there. And if somebody like, let's say in, um, oh, I who, oh yeah. And then like Ian's case where he's talking about the, where he has the client with like a, a little bit higher up, but that just mean like the, the twist is just occurring further up into this. So it'd be like a higher point on the femur would be a yeah. bigger twist. Yeah. And then in terms of the foot, would that just no, mean like- so, so hang on. I think you said the key word there. It's a bigger twist, right? Just a bigger twist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more twist. Oh, okay. Right. Don't overcomplicate it. Well, I don't know if it's overcomplicated, but- well, Like what, where in the foot would that be? Like what would it just be like? Would just be like, does that mean there's a larger twist? Yes. Like a, okay. Yes. Right. Um, think about, okay, think about an exaggeration of the uh, first metatarsal position. Mm -hmm. So like a bunion. Yeah. Ooh, okay. 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 But, yeah. but, but look proximally at what's happening. Don't look at the bunion. The bunion's the distraction, right? right. Okay. Because it because everybody looks there. They don't look at what's going on proximally. Right. It's like, why did the, why did I get that? Why does the, the bunion have the shape that it does is because proximally I had to increase the twist to get the, the first metatarsal head down. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh-huh. Cool. Thanks, yeah. Bill.